cool. Alright ladies and gentlemen, this is Gojo 4 with you in something I promised you guys, the Pacific Rim Film Review. Let's go. It's kind of the big giant monster movie event of the year. It's, for many kaiju fans, it's kind of the must-see film of the year. It's also a nice kind of, uh, it's like a, a, a candy bar or something to get us going until Godzilla comes out next year. So Pacific Rim is the story of a world where an oceanic rift has opened in the Pacific Ocean and giant monsters are kind of crawling through named Kaiju, which is the classic Japanese name for a monster, and humanity isn't looking too good. So they build giant Jaegers to uh, defeat them and destroy them. And it works for a while. And we have Rowley, our main character, who basically uh, used to be a Jaeger pilot, but then he left. Um, due to, uh, well, shit just went down. And now, the Marshal has called him back in to be a pilot once again, because the Marshal has a plan to basically save the Earth in one last ditch effort. And the film really just starts right into it after kind of explaining the events that just goes right into the first monster battle. So from the beginning, the monsters are already introduced to us. The thing is, this movie is not about one single monster and its attack, or one single robot. It's about, really it's about the war. Because this isn't the beginning of the war. This is pretty much the, humanity is losing the war and this is the end. Like, they have to do something now. It's not like the monsters have to be hidden from us. They're, they're a threat shown to us right from the beginning but they get bigger and bigger throughout the film. That's what the movie's about. It's about the kaiju war. Hey, you know, that's funny. Because that's what they actually call it in the film, like, kaiju war. And I could have sworn I made a short little video called that. Oh, excuse me, Legendary Pictures. <coughs> Check, please. Just kidding. The monsters are just gigantic. And they're really treated like forces of nature. They'll have different categories, like, you know, you would make a hurricane or something, like category four, category five. Like, so Jaegers themselves are also really big. And that's when we get into kind of the monster combat of the film. It's kind of like the kaiju fight very animalistically with the paws and scratching and biting and stabbing. While the Jaegers fight like humans and their giant robots with like punches, fists, kicks and then weapons and swords and try to hack and slash at the monsters and kill them with like weapons like an ion cannon or like a tesla fist or missiles you know and the jaegers oh my god and talk about the jaegers are fantastic in the film there's four crimson typhoon cherno alpha gypsy danger and striker eureka and so our main character really gets basically thrown back in and the marshal wants him to pilot Gypsy Danger and he needs to find a new pilot. Well, they hold candidate tryouts, but there's one lady in front of him who's leading the tryouts. Her name is Mako, um, who you might have seen in the trailers. And Mako is hesitant, but she really wants to try out for it, but it's the marshal who doesn't want her to try out for it. And then we have the supporting characters, the two scientists, who are in charge of figuring out where the kaiju come from and when they're going to come out and attack and their biological makeup. And Charlie Day plays this very enthusiastic, kind of dorky, geeky scientist who just loves kaiju and loves studying them. And he's obsessed with them. And he likes to flip them apart and he knows every single part of them. And then the other guy is this kind of more reserved math professor who's good at quantum physics and figuring out the, you know, interdimensional physics of the breach or the drift or whatever we're gonna call it. And then we've got Ron Perlman who is He's got a small role, but he does it fantastically. And then we have the other um, mech crew. The Russians and the Chinese are pretty cool. And then the Aussies. The Aussies are great. Um, Striker Eureka, fastest Jaeger. I'll tell you that. It really is the fastest Jaeger. Um, Gypsy Danger is kind of a day, you know, dinosaur. So, I mean, and then we have Idris Elba, the marshal, who's kind of leading the whole thing. 
So he's the man with the plan to finally end this war. You want to tell you about the story? Well, stay tuned. This is a test of the Kaiju Emergency Alert System. This is only a test. In the event of an actual Kaiju attack, the signal you just heard would be followed by emergency information, news, or instructions. I repeat, this is only a test. We now return you to regularly scheduled programming. I hope you enjoyed that short interlude. This is the Pacific Rim movie review, and now on to part two. I've really just told you about the film, what's going on, some of the combat, but now I haven't actually given you my thoughts. The film actually gets to the first monster battle, immediately I'm kind of like, whoa. I'm held in awe because of just, it's so in your face. The battles are so, it's happening all around you. Like you can feel the Jaeger's fist in your face, you can feel the Kaiju's teeth in your face, and the battles are brutal. I mean, this is nothing like you've seen in your usual kind of, this isn't your show a series, this isn't even your high seas, this isn't even your millennium giant monster series. These mechs and giant monsters just tear each other apart. We see limbs flying off, we see guts get blasted, the robots get torn to pieces many times, many times. And then we move into kind of the character of Rayleigh. Um, and so this is where the story really starts because Rayleigh now is kind of on his own. And he's kind of disappeared from being a Jaeger rider. And the marshal is calling him back in. And I think this is where we really start to see Keller character development for the first time in the film. And I know that a lot of people have been complaining about that so far, that the film is really great on visuals, but it's lacking some character development. I mean, every character, really, we don't, we don't really get that much development out of them. Except for Marco. I think Marco is the one we get to know the most. I didn't mind it, because the way it was, it just, it gave us the necessary information. And I think the characters, you know, really came out of never wanting to be a Jaeger writer again. And when he met Mako, he finally, he found someone who he could finally drift with. And that's what it's called when the two Jaeger pilots, their minds come together. I feel like the character development was fine the way it was, and it worked for me. Like, I could definitely see what people would have wanted more. There's also some times when I think the acting can be a little bit over the top. It's not, I won't lie to you, it's not, it's not the greatest acting ever, it's not gonna blow you away, you're not gonna be like, oh my god. But I mean, that, this isn't that kind of movie. You weren't expecting great performances like that. The actors don't really, you know, they're not here to deliver that. What really is here to deliver is the giant robots and the giant monsters. And let me tell you, they deliver. Oh my god, like I said, the giant monster battles are in your face. There's one in the middle that's just fantastic, that actually has four Jaegers in it, and it's just in your face. Gypsy Danger kicks fucking ass. That's all I have to say. Rayleigh and Mako are just going at it. Mako is hesitant to be a pilot, but she's always wanted to do it, but the marshal always tells her back. Rayleigh's trying to convince her to do it because the drift is kind of a crazy thing when your mind melds with someone else. It's kind of something that's really difficult because you have your own memories that you have to kind of get over and get in the moment and be a pilot. We didn't want these characters to die. We didn't want to lose them. You felt something for them, most definitely. I did, at least. And then, like I said, the supporting characters were great. Ron Perlman, the two scientists, Idris Elba, the other mech crews, I mean, they all did a great job. I mean, I was reading interviews with Guillermo del Toro, and he said when he was making this film, he really wanted to give it an edge of theater, and like, the monster battles were going to be kind of like fantastic, and like really, like wrestling matches, and that's what they were. You know, very overly, over-the-top sci-fi movies. But you know what, we don't really get to see those anymore. I mean, it's something that like, no one ever does anymore. Everyone wants to do gritty and real and you know, kind of held back. This movie didn't. It has a whole subplot about people who like scavenge monster parts and sell them on the black market and all this crazy science and stuff that you know doesn't make any goddamn sense. And it works. In this world, it works. Like, I mean, it has a lot of reality in it. Don't get me wrong. This isn't like, I don't know, it's surrealism is what it is. You know, it's, it's, it's real, but it's not. It's more real than a lot of the 
show of monster movies, I'll tell you that. The movie delivered. I think it was a well-made movie. Uh, act, visual effects were great. Acting wasn't the best. Um, Story-wise, I mean, it's kind of, it can be cliche. Um, so I think, like, if you want to criticize the movie, it's probably not the greatest movie. I mean, it's a summer blockbuster. It's not, you know, it's not super deep or introspective. I mean, it's a fun popcorn flick with a great amount of style and very colorful characters. At the very least, you're never going to find any of these characters boring, in my opinion. You're not going to find them too bland, because they're all kind of fun and quirky and weird in their own way. And then criticizing this just as a movie. Now, did I like it? That's the big question. And then... Honestly, I, I can't feel like I feel like I can't answer that right now. Like you know, I I can't even hate this movie. So you know, I mean, you probably loved it, and I've heard some giant monster fans that they loved it, and I want to say I enjoyed it a lot. I really enjoyed it. Like every scene had me captivated. I was on the edge of my seat. I was blown away by the special effects. The monsters look awesome. The robots are awesome. The characters. I was like, yes. We can do this. The battles are fucking cool. I was like getting into it. It was beautiful. It was great. It's a fucking great movie, in my opinion. For me, it was fucking great. And I loved it. It really did. It's probably... My, I'm, I think I'm going to say it's my number one film of this year. Man, this movie, then Man of Steel, then, then Star Trek. But, I mean, I think I'd have to see it again really to ground my personal opinion. I'll say this. It's already my favorite of Guillermo's movies like Hellboy, Pan's Labyrinth, all those other films. This, in my opinion, is his best film, and it's my favorite of his films. Yeah, I... I was blown away. I mean, afterward, I was kind of in a state of shock. I didn't know what to think. It wasn't really a question of, did I like this movie or not? It was a question of, how much did I like it? Did I absolutely love it, and it's like, one of my favorite movies now? Or is it like, I really like it a lot? It's, hey, I'll tell you this, it's better than most blockbuster stuff, like the Transformers series. I want to make one last comparison to say that this is probably the best giant monster film that has come out since Gamera 3. Since 1999, there hasn't really been a really great giant monster film in terms of story, visuals, you know, action, characters, and just imagination. And I think this has been the best one. You know, I will go see sequels if they make them, for sure. I think there's a great universe that they could start here. And I don't exactly know how they'll do sequels, but there's ways that they can do it, for sure. Now, of course, I really want Guillermo to make another Hellboy. So, I mean, if he can... He should do that first before he does another Pacific Rim. So that when we're waiting for the next Godzilla movie, we have something to look forward to in the so Pacific Rim, I enjoyed it. If I had to scale it out of 10, I'd probably give it an 8 or a 9. But on my personal opinion, I enjoyed it a lot. Like, I, I, I think I want to say I loved it. I'm going to see it again. I'm going to get the toys. And then once I do, I'm going to make a little video for you guys. Alright, that's been Gojo Force Pacific Rim Review for you guys to enjoy. I hope you loved it. Go tell everyone about it. Go see Pacific Rim. I highly recommend it. Um, as for a Godzilla teaser and all that, I can't say anything right now. Um, look out for Comic Con. For those of you at G Fest, for those of you currently at G Fest, have fun. Be be safe. Enjoy yourself. All right. Thank you. Go to your fourth.